everyone, this is Pico Entertainment and we're back again and here now we have another video for you and this will be a review of Batman Caped Crusader. This is the latest animated series surrounding Batman and the first season consisting of 10 episodes was recently released on Amazon Prime on Thursday the 1st of August 2024. Now what was most notable about this series was that it was developed by Bruce Timm who as we all know alongside Paul Dini created the iconic Batman animated series from 1992. An iteration that many fans still today regard as the definitive version of the character. The series itself was hugely influential in bringing in a whole new wave of more serious and compelling superhero animated series that were faithful to the source material. And Batman Caped Crusader follows the standard story of seeing the hero and detective protecting Gotham City from various criminal figures and super villains. Now this series, very much like the 1992 version, creates a dark detective noir aesthetic that is very much integrated in the era of the 1940s. And the story themselves concentrate mostly on smaller scale criminal cases and murder mysteries. So overall, how good or bad was this series? Well, in terms of a standalone animated show, I would say that it's a decent effort. In terms of production, it's very well produced, slick and put together. You have some decent visuals. The art style is nothing too distinctive but very much has the similarities with the 1992 show. Now in terms of setup, we have mostly an episodic standalone structure. We do have more sustained narratives throughout the season involving Commissioner Gordon trying to maintain integrity within the police force against the more rogue, corrupt cops who have their own agendas. And we see that constant clash of methodology and enforcing justice really pushed through the entire season. But to be honest, the series doesn't start off well within its opening episodes, especially in terms of the pacing, which at times feels really rushed, in terms of the whole storytelling and the music especially. Now things do improve midway through the season, we get far more compelling stories, and the show becomes a bit more assured in its overall narrative. Now the problem with the show really arises from coming more from a perspective of the original Batman mythos, and how these classic characters have been interpreted. Now, if you're a fan of the comics or indeed the 1992 series, you are likely going to be very disappointed and annoyed at seeing the likes of Gordon, Harley Quinn, Penguin, Clayface, all being gender swapped, race swapped, altered in terms of their appearance. And this is sadly yet another example of the insistent DEI initiatives that's plaguing entertainment today and the adaptation of these classic properties. Now once more it doesn't affect the quality of the show if you're looking at it from a separate entity but as a Batman property I do admit that it was very disappointing and very much of a letdown to seeing how these characters were portrayed on the screen. And what we have here really pales in comparison to what's come previously before both in terms of the 1992 animated series and also the movies. A lot of the characters here just feel very bland and uninspired both in terms of their appearance and their personality. I think what makes the Batman mythology so special in terms of their villains is that they're all very distinctive and elaborate and very extroverted in terms of their characterization. But we get none of that here. And I do feel it's yet another example of how in this modern phase, how we're trying to make things too realistic. It's too restrained. Everything is too held back in order not to be as comic booky. And as a result, it just means that everything just seems less interesting, less immersive, and also just less watchable. I've always maintained that the villains are probably the most interesting aspect of the Batman world, but you really can't say that within this own series here. In fact, I'd even go far to say that the most dominant characters are probably Commissioner Gordon, Barbara Gordon, and also Lieutenant Montoya. Now going into the series there were those that had taken certain issues again with the certain race swapping but it was more to do with the fact that this was set in a certain time frame where people of a certain minority or ethnicity just wouldn't have been able to reach the accomplished positions that they are able to throughout the show. Now overall I don't think that's an issue if we are really talking about the overall story and the pacing and the action. I really don't think the ethnicity really matters as such in terms of that aspect but I can fully understand if people took issue with that and as I mentioned before it's more the people within the police force that are the more substantial characters and this then leads us on to Batman and Bruce Wayne 
and I wasn't a particular fan of this type of characterization. I think as Batman, he's a functional character, nothing really distinctive in terms of his own movements. He's nowhere near the mysterious, intimidating force that what we saw, especially with the 1992 version. He's kind of just there, just doing his heroic duties without really making a truly big impression on the big screen. Now, in terms of the Bruce Wayne, the playboy character, I thought he was fine. What I really didn't like was more the relationship with Alfred. A lot of time, Bruce seems to talk down to Alfred, very much dismissive of him. And that's something that I really didn't feel was in keeping with the overall character. Now, I did mention before, looking at this show in terms of the perspective of being a major Batman fan, particularly of the 1992 series. Now, I will quickly just say it's not really worth comparing because whilst this series isn't bad, it just doesn't hold up in comparison to the 1992 version. Nowhere near in terms of style or characterization or musical score. So it's just not worth really having that conversation. But I will say that Batman Caped Crusader is a lot better than so much of the recent DC animation iterations that we've had. Whether it's in terms of the movies and the Tomorrowverse or the My Adventures of Superman series. This is a lot better than all of those. So as I said at the beginning, as an individual product, I think Cape Crusader is just bad. I just think it was let down by its overall interpretation of these classic characters. Again, which are so integral in really making the Batman mythology such a compelling world and immersive experience. But we don't really have that here. I just wish they had been a bit more elaborate and imaginative in how these personalities were creative. And I think had they shown a bit more ambition and inventiveness, we could have had something special here, but overall this just remains a decent, but also a very moderate and unmemorable Batman effort within modern day entertainment. So those are my thoughts and feelings when reviewing the first season of Batman Caped Crusader. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you have any other movies, television series, or any other topics within the pop entertainment and culture scene that you'd like to see me cover, then also let me know in the comments and I will see if I can provide further commentary for you on that subject matter within the future. Please also hit like the subscription and notification buttons so I can provide you with more high quality content like this in the future. But that's it for now. Take care of yourselves and I will see you very, very soon.